Hello, Anthony. I'm Clint. I'll be the guy giving you your demonstration of your trailer today. I'm going to do my best to uh, walk you around it, point out some things, make sure uh, you're up to date, up to speed, uh, at least to get you on the road for the first time. So as you come along with me, uh, so you know I do start from the front of the trailer. I work my way all the way around the trailer. Once we go all the way around it, then we'll go ahead and go inside and check it out, okay? Uh, starting with the very front of your trailer. This is, of course, the tongue of your trailer. Um, you do have a latch here. The latch is, uh, this is what's gonna hold the, the, the trailer to your truck, okay, to, your, to the ball. So uh, the latch in, in this position is in a locked position and in this position is a unlocked position. Now, when you're driving down the road, you're gonna have it latched in like this and you're gonna ideally have a pin through it uh, to keep it from coming out. Now, it's just so you know, the pin only fits through here if the latch is latched, okay? If it's not latched, the pin will not go through, okay? Pretty easy. Uh, I'll supply you with a nut and bolt, uh, but it's up to you if you want to upgrade out to something nicer, maybe a carabiner or a locking mechanism or whatever it is. Now your jack system is electric jack today. You do have a light on it, so you can do it at nighttime if you had to, as well as an up and down uh, switch here. So we got extend and retract. That's a kind of nice feature. It's gonna save your back a little bit. Uh, just in case the, this feature ever decides to take a break on, he doesn't want to work for whatever reason, you do have a small cover on top here. Uh, this rubber cover, if you pr pry that off, there's a nut on top of there and you can actually put a wrench on it and manually turn this jack if you had to. So at no point you're gonna get yourself stranded out there. As long as the jack's uh, intact, you'll be able to operate it. Um, now your power cord, seven way power plug, in case you don't have it on your truck, we do need to get that on your truck. Uh, ready to go, your safety chains. Several of them, there's a couple of them here. The safety chains are rated to hold your trailer load. These are also going to attach to the bumper of your truck. Okay, pretty easy. Now, so that's two points of contact that you're going to have. You're going to have the ball as well as the chains holding your trailer onto your truck. Now, just in case you're out there on the road and you have any catastrophic failures, meaning your hitch and your chains fail, which it's pretty much a miracle if it does both of them fail, but if they do both fail, you have a third option here. This is your emergency brake, okay? This little simple cable here, um, you're gonna wanna set, uh, hook this up to your truck separately from the chains and the ball. Um, you don't wanna hook to the chain because basically if the chains fall off, this brake falls off with it, okay? So you don't wanna do that. Make sure this is hooked up separately and that way if it does all fail on you, this thing will actually pull the brakes on the trailer um, if you come detached and then the trailer won't go rolling by you on the side of the road. Uh, let's see, going on to the propane system. I'm gonna take these off for ease of showing you. Air propane bottles here, those are filled up, ready to go. When you're out there on the on the countryside camping around, doing whatever it is you're doing, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna run both bottles, okay? You turn them both on, and by having them both on, you're gonna allow the transfer switch to do its job. Now this transfer switch, it does have a little lever here, switches from left to right, okay? Wherever you point that lever is where you're gonna be drawing from. Now, um, the job of this transfer switch is to transfer bottles. So if this bottle runs out in the middle of the night, as long as both bottles are open, this transfer switch will automatically start drawing from this bottle, okay? Now, as it starts drawing from this bottle, this little window here that's showing green, indicating this is a good to go, it'll switch to red. And then it's time to switch the switch over, start drawing from this bottle directly, and then get this one refilled. Okay? Refilling it, same as unscrew the top, make some slack there, undo everything, pull it out. Uh, let's see, battery's gonna be in your battery box here. That is a 12 volt deep cycle marine battery. It's ready to go. Now coming out to your first compartment, there's a couple of things going on here. Uh, you've got your vehicle information stickers. Now these stickers here are quick reference for you, whether it be your tire size, your tire pressures, your VIN numbers, your loaded weight, unloaded weight, information like that is located on these stickers. Now for your reference, do not remove these stickers because if you ever do decide to sell this trailer, the next owner is gonna want these stickers on there as well, okay? Uh, front compartment, oh, sorry, go power port. That's uh, external solar power, now, if you wanted to put it on there. I believe this is a solar panel unit, so, I don't think that's necessary, necessarily, but if you wanted to add it on there, uh, as long as it matches the port, you can plug into it, okay? As, as your uh, capacitor, able to charge. Now, I don't know if you noticed about solar panels, but batteries make more ability out there, not more panels. So batteries are what you want, not necessarily solar panels, but I'm not telling you what to do, uh, just kind of helping you clarify a little bit. Uh, let's see, inside the compartment, you got a couple things going on here. All the way in the back there, that's, uh, I see your power cord, I see your uh, stabilizer jack wrenches, your sewer hose, and your outdoor shower hose. Uh, the mechanics over on the other corner, we'll talk about that when we get to the other corner, okay? I don't want to confuse you too early. Um, just so you know, oh yeah, geez, I didn't have the angle with that. Uh, our main power disconnect switch there. Being that this is a solar panel unit, 
um, with the solar panels, as long as this trailer's in the sun, not under a tree, in the garage, something like that, the solar panels are doing their job. So the solar panel always is going to keep your battery topped off as long as it's able to do its job, which almost makes this obsolete. You practically don't even need it anymore. Back in the old days, before solar panels, people used to have to turn those things on and off. That way they didn't drain their battery in the, in the off season. Uh, but since you have the panel on the roof, um, pretty ready to run, okay? Now, uh, underneath the trailer here, you've got stabilizer jack number one. You do have four stabilizer jacks in this trailer on all four corners. Um, there is a nut here. You can operate it with the, uh, the wrench uh, inside the compartment there. Uh, and again, these stabilizer jacks, they're meant for stabilizing as you walk around in the trailer. They're not really meant to uh, lift the trailer up for leveling and things like that. So let me back up a little bit just to clarify some things. When you're out here camping and you want to, and you want to level your trailer, now level, a level trailer is a good night's sleep. A non-level trailer, terrible night's sleep, okay? Just so, uh, in case you didn't know that. But anyway, you want to actually, with this tongue jack, you want to put some uh, spacers underneath that foot down there. Okay, the reason I asked for spacers, now spacers could be blocks of wood, could be blocks of plastic, whatever it is. We sell stuff in the store. You can go chop some up in your backyard if you needed to. Um, but you put some spacers underneath that, that foot there. That way you can always get more height out of your trailer. Now, this trailer currently is sitting just about level, okay? And this jack is just about maxed out. So if I needed to get any higher, say you're on a hill, and I needed to get the tongue up even higher, I need more space under that jack. So as a general rule, I'm gonna say get some blocks right away and use them under that jack no matter what, okay? Four or five inches probably, or so. Same thing with the blocks for the stabilizers. Give yourself some blocks that, to, that could go under the stabilizers because you never know what kind of ground you're gonna be on. If the, uh, if the ground has potholes or whatever, your stabilizer jacks may not be able to reach far enough to hit the ground. So blocks, blocks, and more blocks. And I haven't mentioned blocks yet. Blocks are your friend, make sure you get those. <coughs> uh, let's see. Anything else to look at down here? Not a whole lot. Uh, we come to your slide. Okay, now your slide comes in now. It's a great feature on a trailer. The thing is with the slides, they do require maintenance, okay? The rubber seal that goes around the outside actually goes underneath, up, and around, okay? All four sides. These rubber seals need to be conditioned. We, we use this stuff called rubber conditioner. We spray it right directly on there. And uh, the rubber conditioner, uh, do it a couple times a year. Now, if you're out in Florida and this thing's seen the sun a ton, do it more, okay? Uh, if you're... If you're part-timer, this thing's usually closed up and you're not using it a whole lot, you could do it less, but it, uh, at least a couple of times a year, okay? And like I said, rubber conditioner, it says it right on the can, it's pretty easy. As far as your tires go, you know, your tire pressures uh, are pretty important, okay? I can't tell you what tire pressure you should be running in your trailer, it's up to the trailer to tell you. So your tires are gonna tell you what they are, as well as the sticker up on the front. So those, those informations are important because you wanna make sure your tires are maintained at a proper uh, uh, inflation as you're traveling around out there. And uh, also to go with the tires, you have lug nuts on those tires. We do check them at 100 PSI of torque, make sure they're torqued up here. But when you get out on the road, you travel about 100 miles or so, get a wrench back on them. Make sure they've actually stayed tight, okay? Because uh, tire staying on the trailer is pretty important. Um, coming around the side here, back, back in, we've got a lot of stuff going on. Power cord. This is our power cord. I am plugged into the, our wall over here. This is a 30 amp power supply today. So that's what size uh, cord you have in the box. You have a satellite hookup and a park cable hookup. Satellite, if you had a satellite dish or something you wanted to put outside your uh, trailer and catch satellite channels, you could plumb it in right here. If you had a park cable, a big cable cord coming in from the, from the campground, you plug it in right here and then switch your TV to cable and all that kind of stuff. I'll talk a little bit more about that once we get inside. Um, outdoor shower, jeez, didn't even open it. How rude of me. Moving on, uh, did the cable onto your freshwater shower, or hot outdoor shower. This is a hot and cold shower. Um, there is a shutoff knob um, uh, lever here on the, the shower head. You can shut the pressure off there. But either way, when you're out there camping, it's a good idea to get the uh, shower knobs themselves turned off, okay? Because if you leave them on and just use the, the shutoff switch on the, the head, it does seem to affect the pressure inside your trailer, okay? Uh, that's pretty easy. Um, let's see. Oops. So I lock that. The oh, yeah. uh, this is going to be your black tank flush out port. Now, as far as hoses go, going to black tank flush out ports, you want to make sure you use a different hose for this port as as opposed to this port, okay? Because this is your black tank flush out port. Meaning, uh, if you want to clean out your black tank once in a while, you want to give a little fresh water spurt in there. Uh, you can put water through here. Just keep in mind, though, if you do run this thing, there is a warning on here. It says uh, make sure your drain valves are open. Um, which we'll get, cover that in just a second. Make sure your drain valves are open before you 
start putting to this putting water to this this valve here because if you do put water to this and your drain valves are not open there the water has nowhere to go but in the toilet tank fill the toilet tank keep climbing keep climbing keep climbing and if you forget about it it comes right out the top of the toilet okay so make sure you're paying attention to this and this is, has a, a way for the water to get out should you be putting water to it now uh, your fresh uh, fresh water oh you have to ex excuse me here uh, this this valve here, this is your fresh water, uh, city water intake, okay? So talking about hoses, I usually have a orange hose for this one and a white hose for this one. It keeps them separated, that way you don't have any cross-contamination going on. This is your toilet tank after all, and this is your fresh water inlet. So city water, talking about uh, glamping or staying at the campgrounds, okay? Uh, if you have a dedicated water supply, coming to the trailer, you can put it right to here. And this will go directly to the faucets, the shower, the toilet, um, and what else is in there running? The water Sick. heater, stuff like that. Um, so that's, that's city water, that's when you have a dedicated source and probably you have a place for the water to go should you use it. Uh, gets me to my next point, which is your drain system. This is your sewage drain. Um, this cap right here is keeping the, the, the goodies inside, I guess you'd say. Uh, the two levers here actually operate two chutes that are further in. The left one, this is gray, this is uh, the, the black, we call that the gray water pool, and this is the black water pool, okay? So gray water meaning your sinks, um, showers and stuff like that, usually it's soapy water. And then black will mean your toilet, so that's directly coming from your toilet, okay? So a good tip for you, uh, get your hose hooked up before you start pulling levers, okay? Because if you pull the lever first, by the time you unscrew this thing, everything's going to be right behind that cap, okay? So get your hose hooked up, route it to your drain. I like to pull the black one first, that's my, my dirty solids, and then use the gray one to kind of rinse everything out. Usually, it's, like I said, soapy water, it's pretty easy. Um, water heaters right here, this thing's plumbed up, ready to go. Uh, just so you know, I'm going to point out a couple of things. This is your check valve, so you can check pressure. I'm going to barely crack it so I can get some water dripping out of it. And this down here, this is actually your drain plug. So if you wanted to drain this for the off-season, um, winterize, things like that, that's where you're going to get to that, okay? Cool. Uh, coming around the back of the trailer, this is your back bumper, of course. Nothing obvious. Um, that, sorry, that's pretty obvious. Uh, one thing about it, that does, it is actually the right size to accept your sewer hose. So if you want to uh, store your sewer hose in there, that'll fit in there. Um, and uh, your staircase here, the staircase isn't just for looks, it is for you to get to the top of the trailer. Uh, it's a good idea to get up there and double check your trailer a couple times a year. You know, not only do you have a slide, you have the whole roof up there. So you want to make sure you don't have any holes poked in your roof, branches that could poke into things. Heck, if you park under a tree, your slide's going to be covered in leaves. So you got to get up there once in a while, double check everything. And it's part of ownership, getting up there and just making sure your trailer's in good shape, uh, looking for whole small, small discrepancies that could become big problems. Okay, so get up there once in a while and double check your old roof of your trailer. Uh, spare tire, pretty easy. Just so you know, your trailer is pre-wired for a backup camera. Um, if you wanted to get it, it looks like the Voyager is the system that they use, use there. Um, you can go ahead and open the cap, uh, unscrew the cap there and just plug and play. It's pretty easy, just follow the instructions. Uh, let's see. Next side, start from down here. I'm going to point out the stabilizer jack again. Remember I showed you the nut on there. You can physically manually push them. But this is actually an automatic system. Uh, you have these two levers here. One's one side, one's the other side. So if we extend them. They're coming down, coming back, coming back. Um, and again, those are just for stabilizing. So just whenever you get yourself nice and level, um, whether it be with the tongue or just, I don't, even, I don't know if I actually talked about this, blocks under your tires, left to right leveling, okay? So side to side, it's gonna require blocks under the tires and the stabilizer is just gonna uh, stabilize when you're walking around. And so if this is only a 21 foot trailer, you get a couple people walking around out there without the stabilizers, you get this thing rocking like a boat. So stabilizers are gonna do a, a lot to help stabilize and keep everything holding still, okay? Uh, your awning. Uh, just so you know, the awning is pulled out about halfway. I can pull it out even further by starting not having to worry about my uh, faucets and plumbing and stuff like that in the bay here. So I only pulled it out halfway. It does come out a few more feet. Just so you know, um, the controls for the awning is inside. And when you're, when you're operating the awning, it's important for you to know that there's no kind of warranty regarding wind damage to this thing, necessarily rain damage too, for that matter. Um, these things are just simply not meant to carry those kind of loads. So if it's going to be a windy day out there, or if you don't want to worry about it, I'd say never go on a hike or go to dinner with this awning out. Okay, always pull it back in. That way, if the wind does pick up, you don't have to worry about it getting damaged. Now, uh, I'll say it again. No warranties for the awnings as far as wind damage goes. Okay? Uh, so be, be careful with it.
Uh, the lights are controlled from inside. You do have outdoor speakers, which are controlled inside this panel right here. Uh, this is just the back side of your refrigerator. They put a panel here just, just so you could clean it, I guess, do maintenance. Um, it's simple as popping the two screws uh, and popping it off. Uh, no real need to get in here. I think the only time you really have to get in there is just to do some seasonal cleanouts or whatever. It's not a big issue, okay? Um, back side of your furnace, okay? This is gonna, gonna be the exit for the heat, or the heat, the exhaust, I should say. And this does get hot, so beware. Do not lean your lawn chairs uh, on this, okay? They can melt. Power, 120 volt, ready to go if you wanted to plug in anything, including a TV, that's cable right there. Spray port, that little curly hose that was in the box over there, plugs in right here. Wanna plug in? Okay. Uh, pretty easy, but that is cold water, so maybe for your feet or the dog or whatever, unless you're, or, or maybe you're being naughty, okay? Uh, let's see, uh, fresh water intake here, okay, big one. Um, we talked about city water coming in there. Okay, city water is when we have the campground. Um, it's, it's, it's dedicated water coming in that goes straight to the faucet, okay? This intake right here, this one's got a bigger opening. Consider this kind of like a barrel, okay? So you've got a, barrel, a tank in the bottom of your trailer. You put water in through here, you're filling the tank, not the faucet, okay? And then at this point, you're, you're boondocking. You're off grid usually using this port. Um, either way, Put it in through here, that way you can, you can use your water pump, you can go off grid. Now, generally speaking, oh gosh, let's see if I can find it. You do have a drain for that tank, okay? Uh, if you put water in here, there's gonna be a time where you need to get the water out of it. Directly below this uh, frame rail here, you can see a little white switch valve. And that's the drain for that tank, okay? You pop that open and that's how you're gonna get the water out of there. Pretty easy. Oh, and I did notice a couple things here, which um, the factory that built this trailer has put a sticker here, it says backer location, talking about televisions. If you wanted to put a TV here, the factory says it's okay. Also saying, they also put one here. Doesn't make as much sense to me, they, but they put that there, I did not. They tell me that they can put a TV there as well, okay? I would never try to hang a giant TV on the side of a trailer. That's just me personally. But the factory says, if you want to put a TV mount there, you could. Let's see. Uh, oh. Front door, of course. Entry, we'll talk about that in a second. You do have a dedicated Quick Connect propane here. If you wanted to get a connection going and put a, say, outside grill or something like that. This, is, uh, this little lever here is in a lock position. That's closed. This in line is open, ready to run. But when it's in line like this, you cannot operate the switch, okay? It's actually gotta be closed to operate the switch. Pretty easy. That's if you wanted to do a uh, outdoor grill or something like that. And then of course, another stabilizer jack. Uh, controls again, awning, or controls, I will. Uh, Again, this is stuff I pointed out to you earlier, power cord, uh, wrenches, sewer, co sewer, sewer hose. And I do recommend for sewer hoses, you get one with a buckle on both ends, okay? This one simply doesn't have a buckle on both ends and it will only be usable by itself. You won't be able to link any other hoses to it. And then your cold water shower is right there. That's pretty easy stuff. Um, big important stuff, you got your solar charge controller here. I'm gonna tell you what kind of solar, uh, solar power you got coming in right now. It's, Showing 13.6, but I am plugged in after all, so it's gonna show pretty high right now. But once you get outside, um, it'll give you your going rate, go, uh, your current rate for your battery. And feel free to tinker around with that. You do have owner's manuals for every, all, all these items inside the coach, okay? Uh, and although it's there, I can show it to you, I can't operate the thing entirely, so it'll be up to you to go through that manual and learn it. And then you have a tire link system here. The uh, tire link system is a tire monitoring system. Uh, it is aftermarket, it's able to put on your trailer. It tells you if your tire pressure is getting low. Um, and it simply would plug in there, okay? It's pretty easy. About to go inside the trailer. Um, staircase is pretty easy. Just flipping it in and out. I should use two hands, but I try to make that look a little bit easier usually. Sorry about that. I tried to go one more. Boom. And the lock, uh, the door latch system to lift up and tight. Okay? Coming on inside, I'll follow you. All right. 
little coach going on. Now, when you first walk into the trailer, what you're going to notice to your left side here is the control panel. Now, this control panel does several things on the trailer. For one, it monitors your tank. So, uh, tanks and battery for that matter. It shows battery rate, fresh tank. I did put some water into this morning. And then your tank capacity or your tank uh, holding, whatever you're uh, holding in there. Uh, so, they're all empty right now. Your slide controls are here and your awning controls are here. Just so you know, the awning, um, when you push the switch here, there's nothing going to prevent it from keeping going beyond open, okay? So it's just, you gotta watch it, you gotta push it when you want it to go, and you gotta let go when you want it to stop, okay? Very important you pay attention to it. Um, and then slide controls with your slide, when you are running the slide, it's important just to make sure your slide comes all the way in and all the way out. A lot of these slides do have a vocal clicking sound that goes on, if you do have that, that's what you're shooting for, okay? Um, and then down below here, I've got a couple switches here. Uh, gas water heater, electric water heater. I am plugged into the wall currently, so I am running your water heater off of uh, electricity. If I wanted to run it off gas, I would just switch it off and switch to gas. Now, if you do run the gas, there's a little light up here. That's water heater reset. So if your gas doesn't work or isn't working for whatever reason, this light will go uh, will turn on, okay? Um, you have a tank heater here. Uh, so if you are in cold conditions and you don't want your water tanks to freeze up these are tank heaters okay um entry lights and awning lights so the outside big strip light here that's pretty easy the entry light it just literally is the entry light it's a single bulb going on okay now that gets you into the trailer now all the other lights in here are push buttons on the lights themselves so you're gonna have to push the light the button to turn them off right pretty easy you do have a small table extension here now in trailers counter space is critical so this will come in handy. Just remember um, to pull it in before you, you're moving your trailer and simply as simple as lift up and switch it down, okay? Uh, a couple other things over here. You do have uh, a main GFI outlet here. So this is a resettable outlet. Your fire extinguisher as well as your propane and a CO2 detector, okay? Um, if this thing's ever screaming at you, you know you have a propane leak in this trailer, okay? So it's time to go outside, shut that propane off and get it figured out, find out why your, your alarm is screaming. That thing will, will save you if, if you're ever in a, a bad spot there. Um, coming to the, the sink, you do have a uh, pressure. I do have the water pump currently on, okay? So I'm taking water from the pump. Now I turned on your water heater a couple minutes ago. So I'm just gonna see if it's getting warm. No, it, it takes a couple seconds. And, yep. She's hot. It's been maybe 10 minutes. How long have we been filming this? 20? Okay, maybe 30 minutes. Pretty easy. But quick recovery key, quick recovery water heaters. Pretty good to go. Oops, sorry. And then you have uh, table covers or sink covers there. Uh, stove, pretty easy. Now I did do some prep here to make sure I could get it in for you this morning. We do have a travel cover on it. This travel cover is not meant to be cook through okay so make sure you have this open when you're out there tra uh, cooking and otherwise when you're traveling it's good idea to have it down so that way it won't fall down okay uh, turning on the stove you push in twist the knob and click in twist the knob click now like i said i came in here and prepped this okay so i made sure it was plumbed up ready to go when you turn your propane off and you travel it may take a few seconds for the propane to travel to this grill so don't be surprised when you when you do this at home it takes a little longer than a single click okay maybe several clicks and you notice they turned red when your propane's coming through the system these knobs will actually turn red okay so whether it be on or off that means propane's coming yeah propane's coming through so that's a visual indicator of propane's coming through this thing otherwise you have a light on it that's the regular light okay pretty easy pretty easy microwave regular old microwave uh, it looks like convection oven actually it's convection yep so convection oven convection oven <laughs> microwave <laughs> uh refrigerator let's see we've got a looks like a 12 volt refrigerator this thing today so i turned this on this morning as well the freezer is already ice ice cold um uh, you do have a couple of settings that you can adjust here I could turn it either off, cool, or cold. If I was off grid, I would strictly say cool. I don't want to over, uh, overload the system. So if I'm off grid, I wouldn't run the refrigerator on the coldest setting. That, that'll probably over, uh, outpace your battery, okay? But otherwise, run it on the lower setting, and then you could go off grid. No sweat. Uh, let's see. The bathroom. 
The bathroom's a little tight, so I'm gonna have to clear out of your way a little bit to get in here. But just so you know, you do have a shower door that slides back from the back side here. This thing is is uh, kind of tricky at first. It is a small little latch that hooks it together, and then pushing on it simply undoes the latch, and then it spring loaded to snap back. Now, so you know, this thing spring when it's brand new, it has quite a bit of grab to it or yank to it. So keep your hand on it, make sure it doesn't snap out of your hand. Um, and then the shower, of course. Ready to run. That's hot and cold. Okay. Toilet. If you've never had an RV, the toilet has a foot pedal on the side. Now the pedal, if you push it halfway or so, you're filling the toilet. Now to push it all the way is opening the toilet, dumping it out. Okay. Now whenever you go to the bathroom in here, you guys want to make sure that you have toilet in the bowl or water in the bowl. Okay. Uh, the reason for that is because the whole system runs off water. So, you know, when you flush the toilet, um, a load of water going down helps to rinse it all out when you go to flush it out. Now, um, yeah, if, and if you if you uh, didn't use water, there'd be nothing to rinse it out. Now, occasionally people want to make their toilets smell better after they've used them, okay? Um, we know of a couple of things you could do to help remedy uh, toilet smells. One is uh, smell good packets. They're kind of like Tide Pods. They're little pouches you drop down the toilet, you let them do their thing. Um, now they're not Tide Pods, but they are RV tank sanitizing type pods. Those are one thing. Um, I've heard people put dish soap down the toilet and drive the trailer down the road with some water in there and let it all rinse around. And I've also heard stuff like uh, a bag of ice down the toilet with some water and drive it around with the ice to act as like an abrasive. And as it melts, it'll just come pouring out the drink. Pretty easy stuff. So there's a couple options you could do for the toilet. Now your uh, sink, pretty pretty easy, regular sink, ready to go. And your light switch is down below, which not the easiest place to remember when you walk in at first. It took me a bit to figure it out, but light switch is down low. Uh, that way you can get the light on here. You do have a travel latch on the door here. This is a sliding door. Now the slider, when you slide it closed, it's good. Slide it open is good. When you're driving around, you want to make sure this travel latch is actually fastened. That way the door is not flopping back and forth while you're driving down the road. Okay, uh, that's pretty important. Um, now your thermostat is here. Uh, thermostat controls are pretty easy. I'm just going to see if I can turn it on. You hit the mode one time, fans on. Cool, I'm switching to cool. Automatically the air conditioner is turning it on. If I wanted to rotate the say heater or something like that, I just push the mode button again, switches the furnace, you give it a couple seconds, it'll switch from AC, and then the furnace will kick in. Pretty easy. It's just temperatures here, and then you roll it around again, off is right there. Pretty easy. Just whirls in a circle, big circle. Now your TV, just so you know, the TV is currently set on antenna television. Uh, antenna meaning we're catching signal out of the sky. We're not plugged in anywhere. So uh, it's critical for you to know how I did this. There's a small button up here. It's called your uh, your uh, signal booster. The signal booster allows us to catch antenna television. Now, I turn the light on. There's a small light up there. I turn the light on, and then I scan for antenna television, and this is what I was able to come up with. There's a couple of channels. Now, if I switch the switch to off, my antenna would stop working, okay? And then at that point, I would have probably have cable turn, uh, plugged in, and then I'll switch the cable uh, TV all to cable, stuff like that. Uh, and I'll turn it back on, and then my antenna kicks back in. Uh, now you do have a phone charging port just below the TV here. So just typically sit your phone on it, and it'll charge your phone. Uh, pretty easy. And there is a swivel set, a, a swivel motion on this TV if you want. There's a small socket back here that the the TV clicks against when it's closed, and then hinges open and clicks closed. Pretty easy. Oh, I got a USB charging port up here, pretty easy. Um, and then power, and then what else you got there? Wi-Fi, booster, all kinds of fancy stuff in this trailer. TV, re or no, let's see, this is TV remote. This is stereo remote. And just so you know, the stereo is currently on. I set the volume down. I hope you like talk radio. So you have A and B zones, so you could switch between inside oh, yeah. the trailer and outside the trailer, yes. or both? Um, for the stereo, I've simply got a radio radio station on right now. 
but there is a feature for inside and outside speakers now. I'm currently running on inside, and if I want to switch to outside, I switch to zone B. Now, saying zone one, zone A is on, so I switch zone A off. It switches to outside, and then back to A. Pretty okay. easy. Now your dining table. Just so you know, your dining table is a pretty simple setup to it. Simply switch, flip the switch down, switch out of the way, and then uh, if I was to... So you just move that thing over to the yeah, bot over. If I was to put the bed up, I'll simply flip the switch out of the way, and, and then... Push down. Push down. These go here. Yep. Yep. And then you set your pillows in, and this cushion will fill in the middle gap. And then, again. So, like so, pretty easy, and then coming back, so you lift it back up, and then flip that. Yeah, once it gets up high. You just take your little lever and it just simply pushes the front of the block. That's your table here. And oh, just so you know, you have storage underneath the, the benches here. Uh, if you can't get stuff through, you can always pull the tops. Okay. Uh, emergency fire window. If you did have a fire in this, you couldn't get to the front door. Um, it is able to be opened up through the window here. Pull the levers. Push the window out. Now, I'm not going to do that for you today because I believe this window falls straight on the floor and I don't want that happening on my shift. Push the window out. You're jumping out the window. It's pretty easy. Ready to go. Now, as far as your bed goes, there's not a whole lot going on here except for your uh, outlets and your USB plugs. I see you. Oh, I guess it's got just in the corner there. You have under bed storage here. In case you want to stash anything under there. Closets. Very good. Now, as far as your air conditioning comes, whenever you're put, uh, running your air conditioner, the air will be coming through these, these vents here. Uh, if you didn't want them to come through the vents here, you can shut the vents and then open this chute. Okay, opening this chute, we call it the dump feature. It'll dump air directly down into the cabin. So if I just came in and it was a hot day and it was hot in here and I wanted air in here now, I'd probably flip this open and have the air dumping in rather than routing through these little vents, okay? But if you want a dedicated air, Vent, 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 all over the place. Now your heat simply comes out from the floor. This feature I gotta show you directly into this big cabinet here is a breaker panel. Flip it open. You got your breakers and fuses. Good idea to carry your breakers and fuses with you. And just so you know, with, with the outlets in this trailer, I showed you the uh, main resettable outlet here. If any of your outlets are not working for you, double check this hasn't tripped. Okay, you gotta reset the breaker. Pretty easy. And then let's see, smoke alarm. Smoke detector. Did I show you the LP alarm already? Yep. Yep. Showed you the LP alarm. And I think in a nutshell, this is about it. I oh no, no, no. One last thing here. Your blinds. Friction. Pull them. Push them. Simple. And again, thank uh, th thank you, Anthony, for uh, letting me show you this trailer today. And I'm gonna go ahead and put your keys inside your pouch, your owner's pouch, along with your. Uh, TV remotes. I'm going to put these both in here and aside from draining all the water out of it, turning the propane off and pulling your slides in, I'm going to stick this pouch right underneath your stove in this drawer. Thanks again Anthony and if you guys like this video uh, please like, subscribe and share and if you'd like to pick up your very own uh, trailer from White Horse RV please feel free to reach me at 609-404-1717. Again, thank you for taking the time to watch this video today. That is a demonstration of how to work your trailer.